And does your textbooks from Western Ontario years ago, do they apply for the next leaders of these four central banks? Well, of course, we have very different situations, right? We have uh, Carney and the Bank of England, whose policies are predicated on these expectations of a slowing in inflation from 3% to about 2.5%. And the other panels are, are, are hoping at least to see some, some pickup in inflation. But, you know, I think one of the issues that we have here is... We're, we're there's fixated on these small moves of an, in inflation, yeah. potentially big changes in policy. So the ECB is looking for a slowing in inflation to one and a half, from one and a half to one and a quarter percent. And based on that, are expecting to buy 30 billion right. euros of bonds next next year. <laughs> um, these are small differences. We could easily see a quarter percent increase in inflation, and that puts their policy in something of a flux. The hinging of these four good people on stage, and David Wessel's fabulous job as moderator, is on a physical contraption that was at the London School of Economics in the early 1950s. And A.W. Phillips ended up with a Phillips curve, which we all kneel to the altar and worship to. Does it still work for Carney, for Corota? I think if you take it back to way it was originally created, it, it, it does work. There is some evidence that it works. But what, what the central bankers have done is they've taken the A.W. Phillips work and, and made it more about inflation. Now, if you look at, and we've looked at, uh, in, in the wage moves for prime age workers and the unemployment rate for prime age workers um, and made some adjustments to take into account the dynamism of the, of the U.S. economy, um, it does actually show that, that that Phillips curve worked as it did back in 1958. Um, but if you try to make it about inflation, that's where things start to break mm -hmm. down. Uh, Conrad, does forward guidance work? So uh, Mario Draghi is saying that forward guidance is actually a fully policy instrument. But then what happened to Mark Carney is that he tried to introduce that and then had to step away from it, uh, which earned him the nickname of the unreliable boyfriend. I, you know, and that's the problem, right? We, we've known for a while now that this is an important part of many central banks' policies, the forward guidance. But, you know, you have Carney who's had to flip-flop around. You have, you have Yellen who, who I think now is feels more comfortable in speaking more openly about the fact that uh, you have a, a panel of up to 19 <coughs> people who have different views uh, trying to communicate something of a, of a, a joint view of, of, of a committee, and it's very difficult to do that. Um, so I, I think it, that those are the challenges that those banks face. Uh, we have people with different policy views of the Fed um, who might have different views on where policies should go. So how do you get a uni unified message on that and make that an important part of your policy 